preaching tonight but I want to share something with you it says here um, and it shall come to pass before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear thank you Jesus I'm gonna read that again it says Isaiah 65 verse 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear um, this scripture came to me this morning while I was thinking I got up a little early um, as I normally do get up early trying to um, prepare for rising command your day but because of where I am I got up and I began to talk to the Lord and I recall and I wanted to share something I believe will help somebody and I'm asking you to share this life um, yesterday um, we were myself and my Alma Bear sister Ro we were coming um, on the airplane we were coming and normally when I travel I don't like to travel alone because I don't like flying I, I really don't like flying but I promised the Lord that I will go wherever he wants me to go as his servant so I don't like flying because it, it, there's something about the airways I don't know I don't like it and the movements just my heart just you know um, so every time I do fly I and especially for my engagement my armor bear do travel with me um, appreciate her so much but while we were while we got on on the plane before we got on the plane and we checked in and when we checked in uh, praise God the seats were already all taken up and um, we were not assigned seats together in the same row um, so I um, we, we decided that when we get on that we're going to speak to the person that will be sitting next to us um, if they can switch seat with us so that we can um, you know just be next to each other because anybody knows that I flied with me or flew with me before in the past Poor Cheyenne. I don't know if sometime her hand gets literally red after the way I hold her hand. <laughs> because I've had some really rough turbulence in the past in flying. And that's why I don't like to fly. And I, I honestly believe that it's the my, almighty God that is literally keeping that plane up there. So I will grip their hands like real tight when we're landing and when we're going through turbulence because I, I don't, I, I feel like I lose my control when I'm flying. Can I say that again? I feel like I lose my control when I am flying on an airplane. But one thing I believe, Sister Katty, is that when I lose control, when I am flying on an airplane that it is it is now definitely in the hands of the Almighty God when I'm on the ground and I'm driving my car when I'm on the ground and I'm walking I am NOT fearful like that not like that now I don't want y'all to get deep on me now and tell me God I'm not giving you the spirit of fear but of love power and it's all mine yes he does but did you not know that the man that said Lord if you can do anything help my son and then when Jesus said to 
asks, respond to him. This is what the man said. He said, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Because there was a battle with humanity. Because we battle many times with fate and fear. Sister Romaine says something very profound on yesterday. She said, there was something that was going on and she said to me, I think she's really walking very close to me now. She said, fear our fate. And you can check out her post. She said, fear our fate. Choose your battle. I said, fate it all day, sis. But we, f we, we wrestle in between fear and fate. And that is the truth. That is as truth as it can get. If I have any real people on here. Are y'all hearing me? My scream is a little quiet. I need y'all the thumbs up. So keep it going so I know that you're hearing me. All right, please. She said, fate or fear. And I said, sis, I choose fate. And I'm going to fade it all day. I'm going to fade it. And it was very profound and very good to be reminded of the word. And so when you're on the ground and you're driving, for me, I'm not that, af I'm not that fearful because I, am, I hold the wheel. Sister Marlene, I hold the steering wheel. And because I'm holding the steering wheel, I have more confidence but watch this most of my confidence now switch and it's no long it's not that it's no longer relying on God because it is relying on God in a sense that I pray for the divine protection of God for the divine covering of God but I have more confidence because I I have the wheel and I mean I feel like I'm in control and um, when you're in control, you're not, you don't, you don't, when you know your next move, I don't want to preach. I, I got to save my voice. When you are in control, it's easier to fate it and not fear. So because of my experiences on the plane, I have to get a seat. That is a sign next to the person that is traveling with me. But sometime it will shift. Sometime it will shift. And it did. It shifted on me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It shifted on me, Minister Chanel. Because when we got on the plane, we thought that the person would have been nice enough to say, okay. You can have my seat. I'll sit, I'll sit in your seat. I'll switch it. <laughs> and God will allow you for a brief moment. Isaiah said. In Isaiah. Um, was it Isaiah? Um, I was reading a scripture. I think yesterday. He said for a brief moment. I forsake you. Or I leave you. Or I step apart. For a brief moment. But he said, with well, great mercy, I'm going I'm to, I'm you know, pull you back pretty much my, my interpretation. But it, it's only for a brief moment. Only for a brief moment. So we sit on the plane, Rosetta Hutchinson, and we sit there and the man decided that he's not going to switch his seat. Nobody. There were all men that were sitting next to me and next to her. And they decided we're not switching our seats. And I got I'm like, oh my God. You know, I went and took a face, a selfie, and I posted it. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> Whose hand am I going to hold on to for this flight? This flight is about three hours. Literally, it was three hours. It was really that long. And I'm like, whose hand <laughs> am I going to hold on to? I've, I, I don't have any control. When you're flying on an airplane, paraphrase. Thank you, Sister Marlene. I, it's early. My language not too, too together yet. 
whose hand I'm going to hold on to. Because when you're on the plane, you're sitting in the seat, right? So you, you can't stand up because they make sure they tell you don't move. Keep your seatbelt on. So I got a little, you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't angry or anything. I was more like, I was, I was irritated a little, you know. Say, God. And while I was sitting there, <laughs> just before the plane is getting ready to take off, just before the plane is getting ready to take off, the lady came, the uh, herosis she um air hostess <laughs> y'all forgive me she walked down the aisle and she came to the man that was sitting next to row and she said cap our captain one of them and she said there's a seat up there we have two seats we have a window seat and we have and seat at the end which one do you want and he said he'll take the window seat and just as just as the plane is about to take off God did it he switched the seat while I was writing the post this is what I was doing I was writing the post the post it I tried to post it but it didn't post yet and I was writing and I said, Lord, take the wheel. Right? I said, Lord, take the wheel. That time I've been writing in the post. What am I going to do now? Because literally, I'm really scared of flying. I said, Lord, take the wheel. I'm taking, I'm telling y'all in my Jamaican language. I said, Lord, take the wheel. I'm going to read Isaiah 65 verse 24 again. All right? I know I was going somewhere and it shall come to pass that before they call y'all I feel like jumping up in at this bed here this morning I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear Ro look at me and she said as soon as I get up, I got up uh, laughing. That face that y'all saw me post was switch. And I begin to smile. I begin to laugh to the point where the persons on the other side and on this side were smiling and looking. And I switch seat and go over to where Romaine was, Ro, and sit there. And she said, you can't tell me God don't hear you when you pray. <laughs> and I was like, all I could say was, oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to read the scripture one more time for somebody because I'm testifying this morning. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You all understand? And I come to on this morning to tell somebody that when you take care of God's business and when you stay committed to God and when you give your life to God and when you get to a place where you say, God, it's all or nothing. One of my favorite motto, one of my favorite motto, one of my quote every day, all day when it comes to the work of God, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to serving God. My quote is, all or nothing. What am I saying? At 17, I told God, I said, God, I don't want to play church. If I'm going to serve you, I want to do it with everything that is in me. I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want to be a church goer. I don't want to be somebody that just goes to church, sit in the seat and does nothing. I don't want to play church. I told God from 17, when I got baptized, I don't want to play church. And I said, my favorite motto when it comes to God is all or nothing. This is the reason why I do everything that I do with everything that is inside of me. I give it everything. You know why? Because it's either you're going to go 100 or 200 for God, or you're going to go none at all. It's not good to go off way with God. 
it's not good. It doesn't work. If you go off way with God, this scripture, I don't care if it is your favorite scripture. I don't care if it's the best quote in the Bible. I don't care if it's the quote that everybody loved the most. But let me tell you something. If you learn how to stay committed to God and give God every single thing that you have, the Bible says, serve him with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, with everything that is in you, every fiber of your being. God is worth, God is worth every fiber of your strength in your body. And it's either you go all for him and fail at it. I'm going to say that. It's either you go all for God and fail at it than to go halfway because when you go all with God I'm gonna read it again because I think it speaks volume for itself I don't have to preach on it I don't have to emphasize on it I just have to read it and it shall Isaiah was prophesying Isaiah was prophesying he was speaking as God's mouthpiece. And Isaiah prophesied this word. And it shall come to pass. This was God speaking. It will come to pass. That means wherever you are, whatever you're going through, what, wherever in your circumstances, wherever, because life is like this. And this is the real deal with life. Some of us are just coming out of the valley, out of the tunnel. Some of us are just entering in the tunnel. And some of us are actually in the middle walking through the tunnel. That's life. Because life happens and things happen to you sometimes that you can like only say, God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? God, why me? Because life is like this. We're either entering into the tunnel, in the middle of it, coming through it. And are exiting it. And God said, that's why the scripture said, wait on the Lord. My husband loved this scripture. He loves, loves, loves it. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew this tradition. All right. Not that one, but the one that says, wait upon the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. And my husband loved this one because he reiterated. And he said, wait, I say, on the Lord. Because sometimes you are literally going through. And if you go through, Bible said, though you walk through the valley or in the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil because I'm with you. You're going through and some of you are coming out and some of you are, are entering but in the midst of wherever you find yourself in that tunnel, whether you're just going in or going through it or exiting that tunnel, just remain faithful. And this scripture, as simple as that testimony is, it meant a lot to me because I don't like to fly and I don't even like to fly alone, yet along not sitting next to somebody that I know. Because every single flight, I'm holding on to their hand or something because I can't get up. I Because they make sure to tell you, keep your seatbelt on. I feel like I lose control. And that's the place where you totally, sometime God have you at that place, Sister Rosetta, where you totally lose control of the wheel. Your hands is not on the wheel and you cannot help. But trust God with every single thing. Trust. And trust is, is, is just faith. You don't see it. You don't know how. You don't know when. But you just know that God, I'm believing that you're going to take me through this. And I'm believing that one day you're going to deliver me from this. And I believe that one day, God Almighty, I said, God, take the wheel. That's what I said. Lord, take the wheel and God, what you tell me in a full plane of over 200 passenger, what is it? Is it an accident? 
that my armor bearer is sitting next to a pilot that has the ability to switch and to move from seat to seat you tell me what what is a coincidence no that's not a coincidence that's a divine setup but the lesson is sometime for a small moment it looked like god is not there for a small moment he said i'll i'll, I'll, I'll allow for a small moment i'm gonna allow the enemy to to, to, to do what he's doing for a small moment I will allow people to rise upon you against you for a small moment I will allow you to go through the trouble for a small moment moment I will allow you to go to the trial but listen I'm going to pull you back in I'm gonna I'm gonna show up I, I, I'm not gone anywhere I'm right there but a small listen it, that that for a small moment I forsaken is not contradicting with the part the Bible that says I'll never leave you nor forsake you because he didn't but listen for a small moment he will allow he will permit he will allow some things to happen but know that he's right there and with great mercy and I'm saying for a small moment right before the plane turned about to take off God switched to the seat and my face switched it and I was smiling I probably had the biggest smile on the plane at that time and God just show me that even Sarah even when you're not deep in prayer even when you're not uh, deep in meditation by by while you are praying while you are talking he said before you call I, I answer if you read the, the another version said before you call I, I'll, I've, I'll, I'll, I'll I would have already done I, I I did it already you understand it's already done and, and and the messenger bible will translate it or the niv will translate it in our current situation like before you call i already took care of it before you show up i'll i'll already take care of it i've, I've already take I've, I've already taken care of it daughter i've already taken care of it. my son i've already taken care of it, it you you're, you don't understand that there's some things that you're only walking into and and you don't understand e ecclesiastic chapter three glory to god said there's a time and a season for everything that means glory to god if god said it for 10 o'clock you best believe whether the devil is there or not glory to god whether the devil is present or not glory to god when god shows up when it's your time ain't nobody praise god nobody can stop you when it's your time and when the time that god set for you comes nothing nothing can stop you and some of you don't know but you're about to amen amen you're about to walk in your time you're getting ready to walk in your kairos time you're getting ready to rock to walk in your cronus time you're getting ready to walk in amen your divine moment amen praise god but what am I saying? Glory to God. I had to sit in that seat and I had to wait. Oh, Shaketo Rabahai. I had to sit in that seat and I had to wait for the minute. I had to wait for the second. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. I, I believe, glory to God. I believe, Sister Natasha, that what was going on, amen. God allowed that captain to sit beside Romaine because he knew, amen, that I would need that seat. I believe God intentionally had him in that seat reserved for me glory to god but the switch was only a moment amen the switch was only going to be get ready to take place for a moment but watch this in the natural amen praise god they would have never switched the pilot yet until they would have uh, they would have never switched him yet until watch this don't miss it they would have never switched him yet until everybody was seated in the plane and they would see what seat was available for him to be switched to because there's no way they were going to switch any and anybody there was no way they were going to change glory to god any and anybody's seat amen change him praise god to any and any person see they would never go to somebody and say get up and and because we have a captain on the plane amen and and we gotta switch him so what god did god did god set me up god set me up what god did god put him right next to my armor bearer praise god god put him right next to my armor bearer and said sarah if you just you you don't know sarah you don't know that i'm up to something you don't know that i'm cooking up something for you you don't know that i'm working on your deliverance you don't know that i've already set the time but the time couldn't happen it couldn't happen before the time no way would they have switched him while before while people were coming on 
trying to locate their seed. Oh, good God Almighty, I feel like I'm a preach. While people were coming on trying to locate their seat, glory to God, God had him in that seat reserved for me. And this is the thing. Some of you are looking around on people around you getting blessed. People around you finding their seat. People around you getting their deliverance. People around you have their number, have their seat. People around you getting their breakthrough and you're saying, God, what about me? Everybody finding their seat. I'm in the wrong place. No, you're not in the wrong place, honey. You're not in the wrong place. You're just where God wants you to be. You're in the exact seat. You're in the exact place where God wants you to be. Because when God get ready to bless you, when the switch get ready to... Ayabasata. Oh, glory. When the switch get ready to take place, glory to God. It's just a matter of time. But watch this the hostess could not switch that captain until everybody that was seated in their right seat found their seat amen and settled down glory to god amen and i was sitting there wondering in my mind what am i gonna do what am i gonna do what am i gonna do and god is saying i already took care of it you're saying god god what am i god what am i gonna do god how how in the world am i gonna get through this how am i gonna find this bill how am i gonna pay this rent the first of the month is coming and the 30th of the month you're pulling out you're here you're trying to find uh e uh uh sister g number you're trying to find john number amen that old boyfriend that you put down and tell god that you were going to take him back up but because it's the 31st of the month and the rent is supposed to be by the third of the month you're picking up all kind of stuff trying to fix it on your own stop trying to fix things on your own we try to fix it on our own we try to go to those people and tell them listen switch the seat because this is my my friend this is my sister this is my armor bear i want to sit next to her and god said no 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 julie you don't have your hands on it this time it's in my hands and you're going to wait until I say so. But I'm going to see how faithful. Oh, I'm going to see if you're going to call on me. Amen. I'm going to see if you're going to trust me like you really said you would. I'm going to see if you're going to really hold your grounds and stand like you say you would. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Sister Molly, you said it's a temporary seat, but watch this. Watch it, Sister Molly. You said it's a temporary seat. You just said it's a temporary seat, and you're right. You are right. Good God, thank you. Help me preach this message. I'm not going to. Oh, Jesus. You said it's a temporary seat. That's exactly what your situation is. It is a temporary seat, but your permanent seat. Oh, God, are the seat your blessed seed yes sister morning that's exactly what it was it was my temporary seed can i tell you this morning that it is your temporary situation and somebody needs to put this in hashtag share and put it is only temporary somebody said this too shall pass glory to god haya bashanda eko rabasata ikanda rabako salabahaya this too shall pass whatever kutamahanda you're facing this morning whatever your circumstances is this morning whatever your situation is this morning whatever the enemy ah, tell your neighbor god almighty i'm already preaching y'all not gonna pull me out this morning whatever glory to god you find yourself in this morning no wonder paul said i've learned how to be content in whatever situation i found myself in i've learned how to abound i've learned how to amen be hungry and i've learned how to be full i've learned glory to god amen amen praise god and we got to get to a place to understand amen that it is a temporary situation it is a temporary position amen for the lord will say unto you he said i know the thoughts that i think towards you say it, the lord thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected and your expected and is not where you are amen praise god for surely when a woman is pregnant amen when she's at the third the second trimester that is not her expected and when she's at the first trimester that's not her expected and when she's at the third trimester that is not her expected and but her expected and glory to god is when she's actually in labor and getting ready to give birth glory to god i come to tell somebody you need to hashtag and share and tell 
another enemy glory to god i may be in this situation right now but it's only temporary i may not have the money like i used to but it's temporary amen i may not see how i may not know when but it is temporary It is temporary. It is temporary. This too shall pass. What you're in will not last forever. When we were settled, I'm finished because I got to save my strength for tonight. When we were finished, Minister Chanel, when everybody was settled in their seat, then the Erostis came over and said, Captain, we, Romaine had told me this, the, 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 she had told me, Julie, that the flight was, this is a full flight, but God had to see reserve and before you call i will answer and while you're yet speaking what it says what you say while they're yet speaking i will hear jesus take the wheel can i tell you that i had a really good flight the only time the turbulence was coming was when we were getting ready to land. It wasn't even a turbulence. The plane was just preparing for landing. We had a smooth flight. One that I have not had in a while. And he took the wheel. And some of you this morning... Can I tell you, some of you this morning, you're in a temporary position. Can I tell you, you're in a temporary home? This word is for somebody. Please catch it. Where you're living is a temporary home. Where you're staying is temporary. Where your situation has you is temporary. Relax. Relax. Inhale and exhale. This too shall pass. But watch this. When you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. I couldn't, I didn't, I did not speak in tongues. I did not do a praise dance. I didn't even sow a seed for the seed. All I did in my heart, I knew what I wanted. I wanted that seed. I couldn't imagine myself doing an entire flight sitting where I was. And there's some things you can't imagine yourself going out of or coming out of or going through. I didn't go into deep prior, Susan. My thoughts were heard by the Lord. My desire was heard by the Lord. And before that plane went up, God switched God made it happen. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for life experience. I thank you for life experiences because you told us that before we call you will hear and while we're yet speaking, you will answer. And I thank you, Lord God, because somebody in this prior room needed to hear this word because somebody's right at the entrance of the tunnel 
going somebody's going through the tunnel and god it, it looks real dark and it looks impossible as a matter of fact god is uncomfortable for them and some of them have never ever been to this place before it has never been this dark it has never been this lonely it has never been this cold and god they feel like giving up and they're saying god you're not there and you're not hearing them and you're not going to answer but god you love us so much i pray god i pray i pray divine strength I pray that you'll give them enough strength to endure what they're going through. I pray that they will receive supernatural strength to go through. I pray that their fate fail them not. Because God, you're going to show up for them. And this too shall pass. Lord, I thank you for this hour and for allowing me to share my testimony. It may have seemed simple, but it's so much because you know that that's what I needed at that time. And your word never lie and it cannot lie and your word cannot fail because you said before you pray, you'll, you'll answer. You said, God. <laughs> That you won't forsake us. That you won't leave us. You said. That you will supply all our needs. According to our riches in glory. I pray for that woman. I pray that she will not turn to that old boyfriend. That old relationship. Because you don't show up on her timing. But that she will trust you. To show up on your timing. Because God indeed your timing is perfect. And your timing is right. I pray that that mother don't lose her control, my God, and begin to even take it out on her child because the dad won't show up or the dad won't provide or the dad won't. But God, you say you are our everlasting father. You even say you're the good shepherd that cares for the sheep. And you even said, God, that you won't leave us or forsake us. And God, you said that you'll supply our need. And God, you just know when. We need it. You just know when we need it. You just know when to show up. And I pray for those that have tapped in this morning that they will understand that this word, that this testimony was not a coincidence. Amen. That this testimony was not, glory to God, by chance. That this testimony, that amen, was just to show God that so as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. That God, you have already taken care of our need and that you have already taken it, oh God, but only just to wait upon the Lord and even in our waiting to be of good courage while you strengthen our heart i pray for your people that you'll bless them and that you'll keep them this morning i thank you for hearing me i thank you for what you're getting ready to do on tonight in the name of jesus strengthen and encourage somebody with this word i pray in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and it is so somebody just hashtag this too shall pass amen i want to tell you all amen praise god thank you for